thing that God wants to show us first. God wants to show us first that Revelation focuses on Jesus. Jesus is the main focus of this book of Revelation. The main focus of everything that's going on in this world and what will take place. So even if there's other characters in Revelation that are, we're most curious about, like you know the whore of Babylon, 144,000 will be saved, the red dragon with seven heads and ten horns, uh, you've all heard about the four horsemen of the apocalypse, uh, you know, all these, all these things. Uh, those, those are all minor characters and events in the story that God wants to tell us. Because you see, from a bigger picture, Revelation is about God telling God's people, you know, there's going to be rough times ahead. Satan and evil exist. Now, Satan is defeated because of what Jesus Christ has done on the cross, but Satan is not going to go down easy. So when we get to Revelation chapter 12, we find Satan is intent on destroying God's people, but Satan won't get it done. You know why? Because in Revelation 12, it says, they have conquered Satan by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of their testimony, for they love not their lives even unto death. So they conquered Satan. Satan is conquered with what? The blood of the Lamb. Revelation is all about Jesus. Later in Revelation, we find there's a beast and there's a whore in Babylon and all kinds of enemies and villains that will attempt to destroy God's church. You know, this is sort of an echo of what Jesus told his disciples. Uh, in the Gospel of John, it says, In this world, you will have trouble. But do you remember the rest of what Jesus says in there? It says, Take heart, Jesus says, I have overcome the world. So that is essentially one major point that Revelation is saying to every church, in every age, in every nation. You will have trouble. There will be circumstances that seem too much for you. There will be forces in this world you will not be able to control. You will face persecution. You might spend some time in prison. You might even lose your possessions or even your life because you belong to Jesus. There's pictures in Revelation of Christians who become martyrs for their faith. And God is not holding back and telling us what will or what hap is already happening at this time. But before God introduces us to the difficulties we will face, you know, that's the next chapters, he first takes us into God's throne room and introduces us to the Lamb who was slain for our sins. And why? Because Revelation is declaring, take heart. God is on His throne. Jesus, who is worthy, has stepped up. And all the forces of heaven are working on our behalf. And we're not going to be on the losing side against Satan, against evil. Even though there will be times, um, it may seem that way. You know, the problem is too many Christians think that Jesus came into their lives so that they'd be assured of a good life where they'll all have money they need in their 401k, a beautiful family, a wonderful home, and a great car. And I'm not saying that can't happen. You know, those are not bad things. That would be great. But a lot of times, it just doesn't work out that way. And what Revelation actually tells us that life may not always be easy and comfortable. In fact, Revelation's message is that this isn't about having an easy life. This is all about being part of something that is bigger than who we are. Because you see, I mean, there's a war that's going on. And you know, you hear the word war, you're like, you know, I mean, we don't like wars, right? We don't like hearing about wars. And, uh, for me personally, I know that because I come from a military family and lived in an area when there was a war during my childhood years. You know, my father was commander of the southern region in the Philippines where I was, he went up against Islamists and communists. So, so we know when I was a young child, I noticed how my family was always escorted around by soldiers in civilian clothes. In other words, bodyguards. And since they were around, you know, some of them became my friends. You know, that's not hard. But one time, 
one day I was all set to go to the city with my siblings and I expected one of my soldier friends to be with us. But suddenly someone came up to us and gave word that he was not coming. And why was he not coming? He was ambushed just the other day by the enemy and he was dead. So, you know, as a child I was shocked. You know, that, that was a little difficult to process. <laughs> I don't know, I was either seven or eight at that time. Um, you know, people can be gone just like that because of a war. You know, so war, you know, it's never pleasant. People get hurt and people die from the hands of the enemy. But the point is, all of us Christians, I mean, we're called to be soldiers of the king. And we have an enemy, and his name is Satan. And as we live out our Christian life, no matter what stage in life you're at, we face our own set of difficulties and hardship in our life. There are times when we feel that we're actually ambushed by things we totally have no control of. Satan continues to try to prevent us from living in victory as God's children. But the promise, God's promise is this. Revelations 12, 11 says, You will conquer Satan by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of your testimony, for you have loved not your lives, even unto death. So evil circumstances, you know, temptations, hardships, difficulties, and trials that don't even make sense. All of that Satan may use to take you up and beat you up like a big bully. You know, a big bully in school. I don't know if that's ever happened to you. But Revelation's message is that no matter how big and bad Satan and the power of evil may be, uh, Jesus is bigger and you're on the winning team. So no matter what happens to you in this earthly life, you can overcome and come away in victory because you have Jesus on your side. I want to close with a story about a young man named Nadine Corey. Uh, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right, it's an unusual name. Uh, that's because Nadine's mother is an immigrant from Liberia, which you know she fled because of the violence and death that threatened her life. She eventually moved to this rough neighborhood in Philadelphia. Nadine was 13 years old, five foot two, weighing 100 pounds. Um, his mother was an unemployed immigrant. And, you know, it was said that they talked funny and they looked different. And that kind of made Nadine an easy target for bullies in the area. So the tough kids, they began to tease him day after day. And then one day they just flat out beat him up. Um, there were seven of them. And they hit, they kicked and beat him for 30 minutes. I mean, that's a long time. Uh, he never stood a chance. So they dragged him through the snow and they stuffed him up into a tree and suspended him on a seven foot iron fence. Um, he did survive the attack and would have likely faced more beatings, except that one of the bullies decided to post the attack on YouTube. So, you know, the police saw it, <laughs> they saw the video. Uh, so the troublemakers landed in jail and the story reached the papers. So there was this uh, staffer at the morning show, The View, who read the account and invited Corey to appear on the broadcast. And during the show, they showed the video of the assault on the screen behind him. Uh, Nadine tried to appear to be brave, but you know, he, looked, he looked shaken up. You know, he looked afraid, right? He was saying, I mean, next time maybe this thing could happen to somebody even smaller than me. What uh, Corey didn't know was that the producer of the show also invited other citizens of Philadelphia to appear on the show. So when the YouTube video ended, uh, the curtain opened. There was these three huge guys who entered the stage. Uh, they were actually members of the Philadelphia Eagles football team. Uh, so Corey, who was a big fan of the team, he turned around and smiled. You know, he recognized him. Uh, one was all pro receiver, Deshaun Jackson. Uh, he took a seat on the couch as close to the boy as possible and he told the boy, anytime you need us, I got two of my big boys right here. So Jackson signed the football jersey, you know, they handed it to him. 
then in full view of every bully in America, he gave the boy his cell phone number. Um, you know, just in front, of the, in front of the TV camera. This is my cell phone number. So from that day on, Corey had only been, you know, he's only one call, phone call away from his personal bodyguards. Um, I bet, you know, bullies would think twice before they'd harass a kid who has an NFL football player's phone number on speed dial. Uh, the point is, you know, as followers of Jesus Christ, you have someone who is bigger and more imposing than an NFL player on speed dial. You have the Son of God and all of heaven watching over all of you. He is the Son of God, all powerful, all knowing, always present. So when life gets tough, God tells us that He will never leave us or forsake us. He will always be there for us. No wonder chapters 4 and 5 of Revelation are considered by many as the key chapters of the book. Because before Jesus wants to show us judgment and tribulation in hard times, He wants us to know that He is bigger than all these things. So again, the message is, take heart. God is on His throne. Jesus, who is worthy, is with us.